It was early morning, just like every other day. A plane was set to take off from Mutala International Airport, Lagos State, Nigeria, to Abuja, no force and no issues. Everything was perfect. 30 minutes before the plane arrived at its destination, a shocking announcement was made from the cockpit. A surprise announcement that would change the lives of everyone on board and history of Nigeria forever. Everyone could hear, ladies and gentlemen, this plane has been taken over by mad men. Remain calm, we will not harm you. You will be told where the plane will land. At this point, everyone on board was wondering who these people are and why are they taking over plane. Four teenagers, Richard, Kenny and Kabiru, had just succeeded in hijacked a plane carrying 137 passengers. Among the passengers are some top government officials. But wait, why would a teenager who just finished secondary school hijack a plane? What is their goal in doing this? And most importantly, how do they successfully hijack a plane and reroute it out of Nigeria? Will you blame them after you hear the full story? I guess you will not. Remember, the full meaning of the madman is movement advancement for democracy men. On the 12th of June 1993, Nigeria will hold a presidential election as part of the country's transition from a military rule to a civilian rule. The election was to be monitored by General Ibrahim Babangida, who was at the time the military head of state. The election was to hold between popular Nigeria businessmen who came from the south region of the country, Moshu Abiola of the Social Democratic Party, and a Kano state politician, Bashu Tofa of the National Republican Convention. The election went on fine without any violence. In fact, people would describe it as the best free and fair election ever. Two days after the election, on the 14th of June, the National Electoral Commission, which was the board in charge of the election, would begin the announcement of the first batch of the election results. The release result will show that Abiola was ahead of his opponent. On the 15th of June, however, a group known as the Association for Better Nigeria will obtain a court order asking the National Electoral Commission to stop the counting and verification of the electoral results after citing some irregularities in the election. On the 16th of June, the National Electoral Commission will announce that it has stopped the counting of the election results. But two days later, on the 18th of June, the final result of the election were leaked by some democracy activists and the result will show that Abdiola has won the election by 58% majority of the vote cast. The whole post-election drama will push the military government to announce the result of the election. On the 24th of June 1993, General Ibrahim Babangida revealed that he announced the result of the election because there was cases of vote ban from different states in the country during the election. This decision to announce the result of the election will quickly generate crisis in most parts of the southwest region. The supporters of MK Abdullah, who were mostly the Yorubas and Igbos, will go on a mass protest to show their dissatisfaction over Babangida's decision. Due to this pressure, the military government will hand over power to an intern government known as Ernest Shenikon on the 26th of August 1993. This whole election drama is the reason these teenagers took it upon themselves to hijack the government plane. Jerry Yusu was the mastermind behind this hijack. For him, the plan was simple, hijack a plane and reroute it to Germany, but he needed a team member because only him can carry out this plan. In the process of searching for team member, Jerry met Richard in a hotel where Richard was helping his father to carry out some work. Richard's father happened to be the manager of the hotel. Richard just finished secondary school and wanted to study aeronautic engineer, but he couldn't get the admission in Nigeria, so he applied for a school in Canada. While waiting for admission, Richard decided to join his father in managing the hotel, and that is where he met Jerry and was convinced to join the mad men. Before meeting Richard, Jerry already got two men ready to carry out this plan. They are now set to carry out their plan, they were going to attack government-owned properties in fighting for democracy, right? On a fateful Monday morning, they booked a flight and luckily, they passed the unexpected security checks with lighters, knife and tear gas and of course a toy gun. They proceed to sit like a gentleman they are with their innocent faces. 30 minutes before the plane landed in Abuja, Kabiru made his way to the cockpit. When the co-pilot asked him what he wanted to do in the cockpit, he said he's a student and wanted to see how the cockpit looks like. Just as the pilot opened the cockpit to show him how the cockpit looks like, he pulled out a gun and terrified the pilot. He told the pilot to reroute the plane to Germany and the remaining crew member stood up and pulled out a gun and told all the passengers on board to keep calm or else they burned down the plane. Everything was going as planned. It was a real win. Little did they know everything was going to change very fast 
Why? Because the plane did not have enough fuel for such a long journey. After flying for some hours, the fuel was already finishing and they are now looking for where to land and refuel. They tried Gabon but it didn't work out for them. They tried Ghana but Ghana declined because they claimed that Nigeria airline owned them a landing fee. Luckily or unluckily for them, an airport in Miami allowed them to land. Before they arrived in Miami, they had made their demands known calling on the Nigeria government to overturn the announcement of the June 12th election and swear in MK Abdiola as the winner of the election. They let go of the civilian passenger and head on to the Nigeria top government official on the plane. They gave the government 72 hours to meet their demand or they will set the plane ablaze. But at the process of allowing the civilians to go, they were arrested by the police because everything was on the news already. Hijacking the plane was an act of rebellion against the government. They wanted to change the system that they believed was full of corruption and ignorance of the plight of the citizen. So they did what they thought would start a revolution and bring about change. They were sent to prison there for nine years. Few months later, MK Abiola was arrested and not that long he died in a mysterious way. They were released in 2003 and allowed to return back to Nigeria. Only one of them lost his life. So tell me, do you blame them for this act? And what is your suggestion? Please don't just go. Drop your answer at the comment section. Thanks.